Hello everyone, and welcome to the Narcosis channel, and let's continue the third ECG subject, ECG grid and normal values. And we will continue the third way to enjoy our life as Albert Camus said in his book. The Six Ways to Enjoy Your Life I derive from the game a pleasure that is at once sensual and abstract, a pleasure that lies less in the sport itself than in the way it is played. In the last lectures, we have talked about the ECG grid and the normal P wave. In this lecture, we will continue the normal values, and we will start with the normal QRS complex. The QRS complex is the major positive deflection on the ECG produced by ventricular depolarization. In fact, it represents the timing and sequence of synchronized depolarization of the right and left ventricles. The duration of the QRS complex is the total time taken for both ventricles to be depolarized. Since the right and left ventricles are depolarized in a synchronous fashion, the normal QRS complex is narrow, has a sharp peak, and measures less than 25 millivolt, or less than 25 millimeter, or 25 small squares, or five large squares on vertical axis, and less than 0.08 second, or two millimeter or two small squares, on the horizontal axis. When ECG grid is set on that one millivolt, equal 10 millimeter that equal to 10 small squares. But I want to understand each wave separately. Okay, let's start with the normal Q wave. The Q wave is not visible in all ECG leads. Physiological Q waves may be observed in leads L1, AVL, V5, and V6, where they represent initial activation of the interventricular septum in a direction opposite to the direction of activation of the main left ventricular mass. So the leads in which physiological Q waves appear depends upon the direction towards which the main mass of the left ventricle is oriented. If the left ventricle is directed towards the inferior leads, that's mean that the heart is vertical heart, Q waves appear with negative wave in leads 2, 3, and AVF. If it is directed towards the lateral leads, that's mean that the heart is horizontal heart. Q waves appear with negative wave in leads L1, AVL, V5, and V6. I don't understand actually the difference between vertical and horizontal heart. Okay, let's start with the vertical heart. As we know from the second ECG lecture, the geographical representation of the left ventricle that the V1 and V2 leads located in the septal region and the V3 and V4 leads located in the anterior region and the V5 and V6 located in the lateral region and the AVL and LAD1 located at the lateral region and the AVF and lead 2 and 3 located at the inferior region of the left ventricle of the heart. So in the vertical heart, the main mass of the left ventricle is oriented towards the inferior leads. So physiological Q waves appear with negative wave in leads 2, 3, and AVF. And we can see this on ECG paper on the inferior leads as following. And what about on the horizontal heart? The same thing if we look to the geographical representation of the left ventricle. we will see that the main mass of the left ventricle is oriented towards the lateral leads. So physiological Q waves appear with negative wave in leads 1, AVL, V5, and V6. And we can see this on ECG paper on the inferior leads as following. So the Q wave is not visible in all ECG leads.
a physiological Q wave meets the following criteria. Less than 0.04 second in width, or less than one small square, or less than one millimeter. When ECG grid speed is 25 millimeter per second. Second criteria is that Q wave must be two and half small square in length or smaller than two and half millimeter or smaller than two and half millivolt. When ECG grid is set on that one millivolt equal 10 millimeter that equal to 10 small squares, or in some books, Q wave must be less than 25% of R wave. As shown here, R wave can contain four Q waves, but if it contain more, there is pathology. So Q wave represent the initial activation of the interventricular septum in a direction opposite to the direction of activation of the main left ventricular mass. So we have finished the ECG grid and the normal P wave value and the normal Q wave value and we will continue our talking about the normal ECG values in the next videos. And now let's jump to the question of this day. What is the difference between the physiological and pathological Q waves? Thanks for watching. I will be more than grateful if you press the like, subscribe button, and share this video with your colleagues. If you have any suggestions to improve my channel, leave a comment and let me know please. See the description below for the newest updates and for more infos. Also don't forget to follow us on other social media sites. Keep your narcotic dose and good luck.